The presentation I'm going to um, give you today comes from our um, Smoke View nurses' uh, belief that um, the voice that hadn't been heard was the voice of people who smoke. And so the Ministry of Health awarded us some innovations funding to create videos which were um, based on what people who smoke want from their doctors and nurses. So Janine Tamati Paratini came on board with this um, and she um, drew together five focus groups. So we were totally oversubscribed. We, we, there were, you know, we had many people. She was turning people away, Māori and Pacific people away and other, pe other smokers away because it was amazing. We had really touched a nerve. People who smoke really wanted to be able to give their point of view to um, health professionals about their care around their smoking. And so in the end, we did run five focus groups. And um, as you can see, there, there's a mix of people um, and there are a lot of Māori and Pacific people among those. The um, film company that came, um, that worked with us, Good Life Films, made Sione's Wedding. They um, came to the focus groups and they filmed all of, they um, actually took photos of the people and recorded the people. And then we went through all of the people, and we chose some people to include into a two-minute video. And we made the two-minute video, which I'm going to show you now, and I'll just say quickly that after the two-minute video, we also went on to make um, other videos with Tariana Turia, with Jane O'Malley, the chief nurse, and with some other, um, other, others also who um, smoked, and with four nurses. So they're Māori and Pacific nurses, two Māori nurses, one Pacific nurse, one Pākehā nurse, and they're working with, um, with Māori and Pacific patients and one Pākehā patient. So if you go onto our website, you can see these really, really short videos. They're really short. And um, there's also a continuing development package that you can actually do. It takes 40 minutes. And in that, you reflect back on these videos. They don't take long to watch because they're two minutes long. The longest one's 11 minutes. There's only one like that. And they just help you tease out how these Māori and Pacific nurses and Pākehā nurse work with Māori and Pacific patients. So when you watch them quickly, it's hard to notice things like open-ended questions and the way they approach um, talking about smoking to um, these patients. So here's the two-minute video we made initially. We made this video and then we made the videos of practitioners working with smokers in response to the feedback we got from health professionals about this video. This video is completely based on what the patients said. They were interviewed again while they were being filmed. The director used, who's actually Chris, Chris uh, who's actually, um, who's actually Carrot Graham's cousin, interestingly. Anyway, the director um, used open-ended questions with the patients and they talked about their experiences and what they wanted and then we created this video out, out of that. The way I'm feeling now, I, I, I hate myself because I've fallen back, back into that trap. You know, I'm looking at a, a gateway that's not a very enticing one. I don't know how much longer I have. Two New Year's Eves ago, I finally decided to quit because my kids were giving me a hard time. When I saw the nurse, she asked me if I smoked or not, and I told her that I did. And she just took it as that every other typical person would say. You're a smoker, are oh, you? Yeah. Right. Okay. Have you tried giving up? Yeah. And he said you should stop smoking. And um, that's about as far as it went. He never told me how. I'm going to ask you this and then I'm going to tell you that it's terrible for your body and what you're doing is going to kill you and everything's appalling. What was said to me was I had to stop hanging out with my friends if I want to quit. And as soon as I heard that, I just shut out. Yep. That's all sounding the same to me as your grocery list. To me, it always felt like they simply didn't have time to do anything more than write me out a prescription. She treated it as a job than rather as trying to help someone. It always felt like they were just ticking the box, asking me a set of questions they were obliged to ask me as opposed to the question coming from the heart. Doctors should say to people that they shouldn't smoke because they might have less chance of living. For me, um, I'm one of those people that needs support. I was lucky enough to have a caring doctor that actually took her time and listened to me. When I told her the struggles that I went through, she just told me, look, 
change has to come from inside you. You can really help us quit, so just persevere with us. Treat your smoking patients as if they were, were family. I believe you need to come from a place of aroha and understanding. How about support us until we quit? We do look up to you and look for you for answers and help because where else do we go? You can help save my life and every other Kiwi out there as well to quit smoking. So I think the overwhelming you know, thing I got was that people really, people who smoke, they really believe in nurses and they really believe in doctors. And, you know, we have had our targets and we've had a lot of money put into tobacco control and we're having a realignment process. It's almost finished now and that's because we're not, we really aren't doing that well with um, Māori and Pacific smoking, you know. The rates, if we use the New Zealand Health Survey, have not, have not gone down um, um, from 2006. And so what we have to reflect on is what, what are we doing? Well, how can we do things differently? Are we really um, able to take on board the messages that these people have told us, which are common um, to, to um, many people. And so um, we know that we have, um, you know, we know that we, the advice and help, we know that we have to do our ABC, we know we have evidence-based treatments. Is it around the way that we communicate with patients, how we present them, is that the critical factor? So we have, you know, here, explain, tell us how. So we, we can do that. You know, everyone here is a health professional. We can explain, you know, when we have time, we can explain or we can incorporate a little explanation in our 30 seconds. You know, we can give advice. You know, we can, we can refer people to help, you know, and some, I know some of your services, you know, you'll refer people on to, to uh, services which do callbacks, and some practices do callbacks themselves. We can give people support, but for me, and I've been thinking about these videos for about a year now, for me, when I heard Jamie say, come from a place of aroha and understanding, when I hear Darren say, treat your smoking patients as though they were family, these are the things that are harder for me. Because when I was a nurse, I trained as a nurse, you know, there's always that, treat your smoking patients as though they were family. Now, I'm not Māori or Pacific, you know, can, is that professional even? How can I keep myself safe? But this is what people are asking, and is this the critical thing? Is aroha, what does that mean? How can I convey that? And is this going to make the difference to people in terms of quitting? Sure, they have to have the evidence-based treatments. They have to have the advice. They have to have the referral. They have to have the NRT. We've got e-cigarettes now, you know. We're not really allowed to use those but or to recommend them, but people are wanting them. But what is this araha and family part? Is that the part? Is that the part that's missing for people? Anyway, I'm going to ask Yvonne to talk now. Well, Yvonne is next, so. <laughs> so I'm going to take my Lakes DHB hat off and I'm now going to talk as a consumer because, well, I was once a smoker. And... Um, so, and when Yvonne asked me, you know, when did I start smoking? So I had to think about that. When did I start smoking? Well, I started smoking when I was probably four or five years old, when my grand grandmother would say, Moko, go and light my cigarette, but don't wet it. And so that was our job when we were children, was to light our grandparents' cigarette. So probably when I first started smoking, obviously I stopped for a little while. And then um, 14 was when I became a smoker. Why did I become a smoker? Well, all my friends done it. I was a great runner, but I'd rather go and stand in the field with my friends and watch all my other friends practicing around and have that cigarette. So what made me stop? Um, my mother died of stomach cancer. Did that make me stop? No, it didn't. I knew one of the causes of her illness was from smoking, but it didn't make me stop. So my cousin was 36 years old when she died of stomach cancer, and I'm thinking, OMG, I have to do something because do I want to end up like that? No, I didn't. So what did I do? I went to the doctor. I tried many times to give up, because it's easy. I've tried 100 times previously. So I went to my doctor. And I said to him, 
I need help because my family's dying around me from stomach cancer. And he was like, Yvonne, the best thing you can do for yourself is to stop smoking. Now, that was the last day I had a cigarette, but the relationship I had with my doctor was awesome because he showed me aroha. He helped me through that. He engaged my family. That was 18, 19 years ago. And, you know, I really take my hat off. His name was Dr Ewan Atherton. He's not a doctor anymore. He's an owner of Pick and Save somewhere in the country. <laughs> but, you know, he, he cared. You know, he, we talked. We talked about my family. And he showed me the love that gave me the strength to stop smoking. And I want to thank him for giving the time, and it was extra time, for showing me the love and the aroha and the family. And I take it off to him because me and a few of our friends, we just competed at the Waka Ama World Champs. And if I was still a smoker, I tell you what, I wouldn't have won gold two weeks ago at those World Champs. <laughs> mm. So, you know, I'll, I'll put my, my Lakes DHB hat on now. So, you know, I take the time because I know how hard it is to stop smoking. You know, when I went to see my doctor, I didn't want to give up smoking. I just bought a packet. Oh, you know, that was a waste of, I think they were like seven bucks back then. <laughs> but, you know, um, I care because I know how hard it is. And I know the struggles. And it is going to be one of the hardest things, you know. When I gave up smoking, I put on 20 kgs. You know, and then I had a whole nother issue of, God, how am I going to lose all this freaking weight? You know, so I've been through the whole process and I know what it's like. And, you know, and all it takes is for someone to see that you care. Yep, they piss us off, bloody smokers. <laughs> but, you know, it may be that perfect moment in time for them to make that change like it was for me. Like I said, I tried to give up hundreds of times. And the advice that that doctor gave me that day worked. But um, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you. So just take the time. Because I tell you what, we know if you mean it or not. Thank you.